Yeah. yeah. Take a picture. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What's going on? I'm writing for about 82 people, but uh, one of them, Sports Press Northwest out of Seattle, specifically wanted something on you and awesome. stuff. Awesome. Sweet. Hey, man. Congratulations and stuff. Thank All the you. injuries you've had. I, oh, I didn't real. know if you'd be in a hospital at this time rather yeah. than running. Did you Absolutely. ever consider quitting? Did you ever think, hey, maybe this isn't, this track stuff's not for me? <laughs> the older you get, the more those thoughts come in, you know? Um, I knew moving out of the center and moving back home to be next to my family, um, I knew that was going to be a good thing for my heart and my soul, but I also knew that I was going to have you know, many moving parts. I knew that I wasn't going to have the support, the rehab, the therapy, the people looking after my health. I knew I was going to have to have to beg, have to plead, because I've seen this world you know, change into a world just you know, where runners are kind of the main thing. And the Catholics are kind of left, you know, on the back burner. So, you know, I, I just had to keep hoping that, you know, even though I've had to deal with so much, so many surgeries, so many injuries, that all my hard work and all my, and all my you know, faith in my abilities and the love and support I get from my family, I, I was just, you know, hoping that that would pay off and that would make my dream come true to make an Olympic team. Excuse me, Jeremy, I didn't know, uh, th when you refer to the center, I'm from the Spokane area, so I, I didn't follow your career directly. Yeah, so there's Olympic what Training Center. What center? Oh, it, oh, down Olympic in Olympic Training Center Colorado down Springs. in San Diego, San Diego. Uh, Chula Vista area. Oh, Chula Vista. Yeah. Yeah, right. Jeremy, the backflip, was that spontaneous? Um, you know, I did it at Gosses, so I felt like it's it's good luck, so I'm going to keep it going. How did you feel going into your 10th event? I mean, how did the javelin go for you? <sighs> Man, I, to sector foul what was definitely a PR, uh, I, you know, you can always go back and be like, oh man, you know, I did this, did this wrong, did this wrong, but I really wanted to be around my PRs for this whole decathlon and I felt like I did it, so coming into the last event, you know, I always have that dramatic thing of I have to beat someone by such, such and such seconds and stuff, but I had a wonderful support system, my coaches, my mentors telling me, you know, this is a, this is a moment you're going to remember. And um, I had to take it upon myself that, you know, I love everyone I, that supports me. I love everyone, you know, that believes in me. But this is something that I had to do for myself. So I keep telling, I kept telling myself that this is for you, Jeremy. This, this is for you. Just, this is all for you. Do it. Do you keep track of that points total as you go through the events? Or did you know there's where a, you were going in There's that? a little bit of that, yeah, going on in my head. I didn't, I didn't realize I could still score over 80, 8,400. So... You know, at, at one point I was just like, you know, messing up in the vault and the and jab not going so well. I was like, man, I hope just that I can get third. But to come back and run a second off my PB in the 1500, you know, not doing any kind of any kind of that system training. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's always funny because I talk to like the Brooks people and stuff, and they kind of smirk when they when they ask me what my 1500 meter time is. And you know, I I know that I'm not. I'm not out there just running and running and running. You know, I have 20 extra pounds of muscle on me, and I'm working, you know, endurance, explosion, uh, you know, muscles the whole time. So it's like to go out there and, and run that after nine events, like, you don't know what it feels like until you've done a decathlon. So did the did the 1500 go according to plan? Like, did you plan to get out that fast and just kind of? I wanted to go 66, 66 just to set the tone because I didn't get out in Gotsas and I got spiked really bad. Um, but yeah, I, I went out and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna chill. I've never led a 1500 meter race for that long before. And my coach started pointing at the sign with one lap in and, it, and I saw it at like 62, 63 and I was like, whoa, that might've been a little too fast. So did you rein it in at that point? How did that work? You know, I, I cut down a little bit, but I was like, you know what? I'm already going. I might as well keep going and going and going. And then when Curtis came and passed me, you know, he said, come on, let's do this. Let's just finish strong. And I and I was able to kind of piggyback and just like say, okay, just chase Curtis now. So I know he's, I know he's gonna, I know he's gonna go keep running. Um, yeah, he said just you know finish strong right now. So hey, Jeremy, talk about your vault for um, you, you had an. Had a miss at the open. Yeah. First yeah. miss at the open. You know, I, I just, vault's been so interesting this year. Um, it's one of the things I wanted to work on, and, and I was vaulting really well in practice this previous week, and I just, uh, just kind of pulls and stuff. I think maybe if I'd been on the closer 
hit, you know, kind of more in a rhythm with all the jumpers and jumping at those heights, I think I would have done better. And uh, I'm, I mean, I'm ready to vault 17 something feet, you know, so this is going to be no excuse if I don't do that next meet. When did it say in the league? It's going to take to a, a, a very good two days. I mean, is he, is he, he's not untouchable. He's really untouchable, but. No, he's not untouchable. Um, he's a great competitor. Um, he, I mean, he's in the prime time of his life for being a decathlete. So, whereas if someone is, you know, in coming close to their prime and they have a really, really outstanding meet, I think it could happen, you know. But, you know, he's he's really on top of it right now. He knows, you know. And in decathlon, you get smart with training. You know what you can handle. You know what you have to back off in. You know that <clears throat> if this workout's going to dictate, you know, today and how you feel. You know, the next day it's like, okay, I'm gonna see how I feel. And it's, it's a really big learning process. Because it's so much more. The reason why I ask you that is because like his score day was beat everybody's PR to beat PBs. I mean, that's just going to Olympics. I mean, it's yeah. it's kind of an incredible step. Yeah, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I love Ashton. Not to bag on him at all. Um, I got to compete with him for two years in college, right? My last years in college. In those years where it would take only like 5,900 points to win an indoor meet or it would take 8,011 meet, you just see us getting way more athletic. You know, I was second with 82.39 my last year in college. You know, that's ridiculous. The following year, Paul Tonison, who competes for Spain, took my second place highest scoring record for the NCAA. And then this past year, Zach did it at 83. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, it's one of those things where it's like, as a whole, you know, with everyone scoring through eight places, us scoring that high is absolutely insane. We're just getting more athletic, more competitive, more skilled. And and I, I want that to like, like be understood by the rest of the track and field world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Olympic standards, 8,100, right? We just crushed that by 300 and something points, Zach and I. You know, Zach doesn't have a sponsor, he's right out of college. Sign that boy up, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, Let's just take, you know, women's 800 for an example. 201 is the Olympic standard for that, right? I, I can't really do the math to what 300 points above our standard is to 201, but it has to be running like low 158, high 157 for a girl, okay? And so that to be understood by running companies and, and to help like us have enough funds to train through the year, you know what I'm saying? There's so much sacrifice that goes from building to athletes and building these athletes because, you know, I'm. I'm living below the poverty line. You know, I, I was only able to train this year because I had to go fund me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if we could support us, like, as we are the, you know, the athletes, our caliber athletes that we compare to all over here, you know, I think that the U.S. can be awesome and competitive in this event. Not only just being the best with Ashton or, you know, someone who comes every once in, you know, 10 years or five years. So that's how, all my thoughts how, right there. How much did your GoFundMe account raise? 17 grand. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, as soon as I crossed the line, I was like, wow, that was 417. I think I couldn't have run faster. Maybe a little faster. But you knew at that point that you were... Well, I turned around and I started counting seconds. And that's oh, probably what I knew. What did you do then? Did you go over to your family? They were all in that section? I mean, I ran over there a few minutes later after I, you know, the shock died down. Yeah. What did your dad say to you? I mean, you know, he's proud of me and I... I felt like, you know, between us, the father-son relationship, I mean, you know, they're... They're very interesting, you know, he's been a coach all my life and I felt like, weirdly, the only way that, you know, he could see me as someone who he raised to be, you know, comparative in his athletic endeavors was to make an Olympic team and be an Olympian as well. I'm not bagging on Nigeria either because Nigeria has some of the craziest, you know, um, people that were, you know, 400 sprints, jumps and stuff, him being one of the best Africans of all time in the triple jump. To make it on the U.S. team as a decathlete <clears throat> with our history, just to make the U.S. team in general the hardest team to make, you know, I knew I had a huge hurdle to overcome to to be, you know, considered that by my father and think, think of that way. But I'm just, I did it, you know, I did everything I can. <clears throat> I treated everyone, you know, with love and respect. You know, I, I know that this is a, you know, doggy dot world and you know, I've had a lot of a lot of stuff thrown at me and a lot of people trying to take away from you know my energy but I just you know I just had to hope and, and work hard for that and now I'm bambling I'm babbling right now so. did you at any point think about competing for Nigeria? I did Nigeria and Colombia um, it goes back to you know what I was just saying about running world and all that stuff it's like I mean at, 
Would you get more support? Would, would people, you know, outside of the U.S. think, okay, wow, you you are this good. You're a potential Olympian. You, I mean, you are an Olympian. We should support you no matter what. You know what I'm saying? But it's, you know, it's a different feel in the U.S. with our event. So. Complaints or regrets for the competition? Complaints or regrets? Complaints, I mean, can't complain the weather was this nice, but it was a little hot the first day. Uh, regrets. No, I think I did everything I could. Yeah. Jeremy, what year did you move 